don't even know who you are. <laughs> Filthy friend, queen of the bums, all knowing spirit of the streets. <laughs> all knowing, huh? Well, you probably already know all about my problems then. You're an open book. You were fired. No. You bankrupt? No. Pinwood? Uh, look, if you must know, I'm about to lead an absolutely mediocre life. Oh. So, it's like this. <sighs> Rhubarbara and I... Oh, hold on. Did you say Rhubarbara? Her parents named after the rhubarb type, which makes sense because she's bitter, unbending, and just stiff. I can tell it was long before sight. <laughs> when we grow up, I mean, she always had these perfect little pigtails. She was always telling them the, t the teacher on me and saying whatever they wanted to hear. Picking on her was my favorite pastime. Boys can be so mean. <laughs> well, and then she blossomed, and it got to the point where I wasn't sure if I loved making fun of her or if I just loved her. Eventually, we started dating. Um, in college, she studied the worst of all subjects. French. <laughs> Which, of course, is absolutely useless. So afterwards, she got a job at a local school as a counselor for naughty boys. Boys? They just need a little fixing, that's all. But then a pity cool. <laughs> now, as for myself, I wanted to join the Navy and see the world. Only, I'm not into the whole discipline thing. No, no, Edward, you'll have to be the breadwinner. Therefore, I've chosen a practical major for you. Accounting. <laughs> so, I did what she said, because she's attractive. <laughs> and, frankly, she scares me. <laughs> oh, don't look so bad. We'll have plenty of time to pursue our dreams when we're old. In the meantime, everyone needs a day job. So that's what I've been doing for the last two years. Nine to five. Well, actually, eight to five. With only a half hour lunch. And they frequently ask me to come in on Sundays. And the worst part is... <gasps> Anymore, they're going to be expecting me to work longer hours and attend boring meetings. You see what my problem is? Wow. I may be a bum, but you're a bum! <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? Look, if you can't see what's right in front of your face, it doesn't matter what I'm gonna say. Here, you need help. <laughs> I can't take your money. Let's just head over to the local speakeasy and buy yourself some booze. That's what I was gonna do. Well, where are you going? The story's bringing up painful memories. Sorry. You know, you should be grateful for what you've got. Or else you might end up like me. Listen, Barbara's not the only one with the dream. Wait, do you hear that? I mean, yes, I gotta say something. Thank you. 
my name, stirring feelings I cannot explain. Though the world is asleep, I am wide awake, searching for the path of glory that I must take. Why can no one seem to understand? I cannot rest until I found Meaning you have no idea what you want. <laughs> well, I think I'm meant to be a jazz musician. You think or you feel? <laughs> I guess it's more of a feeling. You play? No, I've never had the time to learn. Look, if I could just break away from my boring routine. What if you find out you're no good? You think my heart would lead me astray? I've seen many a man lose his way in pursuit of an unreachable star. Well, you're hardly the pinnacle of achievement. The difference between you and me is I know exactly who and what I am, and I'm happy with it. No one's happy. If that's what you think, perhaps you should join me down here more often. I can teach you a thing or two. Um, thanks, but uh, what I mean is... What you mean is my mere existence is... Unpleasant and embarrassing, and any sensible Pison would steer clear of my general vicinity. But you don't strike me as a sensible person. <laughs> Plus, it's about time I found a disciple with whom to pass on my wisdom. I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> Till next time, it's been a pleasure, Mr. Uh, I never got your name. Nor will you. <laughs> Do you remember those magical nights when moonlight was 
I crash on your window and lead you away. Romance is still in its blues. Oh, Mr. Angerman! Mr. Angerman, I found him! 
I don't know where it weighs on. You are here by employee of the day. Oh, thank you, sir. <laughs> Hello, Edward. Hello, Mr. Trinkman. It appears you're rather late for work. I, I uh, ran into a few stops along the way. I promise it won't happen again. <laughs> you... You smell like garbage. <laughs> I, I'm sure I don't know why. Edward? Yes, sir? Do you know what I'm going to do to you? No, sir. Do you have any idea what I'm going to do to you? No, Mr. Ingerman. I'm going to do this! <laughs> Does that mean I can have it? You need me a shot. Now, get to work. Yes, sir. Mr. Anderson, would you like to look at these things, please? Then when you're done with those, have a look at these 1099s. Isn't this your job? I'm just practicing my managerial skills. I'm going to need them soon. Ha <laughs> ha! That's the spirit, Weasel. Never do something you can make others do for you. Edward would love to take your 1099s. This <laughs> job stinks. I think that's just you. Why should one man tell everybody what to do? Because, uh, you gotta work for somebody, right? Do we? It's not right I'm telling you. <laughs> what, what are you? A communist? <gasps> no. <laughs> Communists are also into the whole work thing. Oh. Oh, so you're a bum! So what if I am? What if I decide I want to deviate from society and lead a simpler life? Go on! Give Mr. Angerman your notice! One less hurdle for me as I claw my way to the top! No offense, Weasel, but you're despicable. The word is competitive, and at least I don't smell like rotten eggs. Gentlemen, I remind you that you are both on the clock. You are both on the clock. <laughs> <laughs> what are you waiting for? Don't tell him you quit. Right, like I'm just gonna go up and quit my job? Edward's tapping his feet again! So what? How are we supposed to focus on our drab routines while you're getting all musical? What if I happen to find the music in the drab routine? Then keep it to yourself. Never accomplish your dreams 
forget all the ends and live with the means. Cause before you know it, you're covered in flap. Right in the maze of a corporate lab. You're on your way if you haven't already become a boring serious businessman. Boring serious businessman. Boring serious businessman. Boring serious businessman. Thank you. 
have reached what looks to be a permanently high black plateau. <laughs> Ah, putting our savings into those stocks was the best decision we ever made. <laughs> That's nice, dear. <laughs> Where's Edward? I reminded him this morning. <laughs> oh, my dear, you forget that he has the memory of a goldfish. <laughs> oh, uh, well, mm -hmm. I, for one, am not willing to let dinner get cold in the vague hopes that Edward will decide to keep a commitment for well, once. Perhaps for the better. This way we can get to know her barber better. <laughs> As if we didn't know her well enough. How long have you kids known each other? Well, we've known each other for 17 years, but we've only been dating for six. Six years? Why on earth aren't you married? Oh, please, Dirk. These are modern times and relationships are a lot more complicated than they used to be. What's complicated? You get a boy, you get a girl, you've got a baby! <laughs> Believe me, I would love to move on as soon as Edward is ready. Well, my dear, he can't even keep a dinner commitment. Well, perhaps he's just taking some time to look nice. Probably. Probably. Uh, I thought someone was following me, so I hid in the garbage. <laughs> <coughs> Never heard that one before. Someone was following you? A man with a mustache. A man with a mustache was following you. How terrifying. <laughs> you don't think it was a Paul, do you? He looked like a businessman. Can we just say grace? <clears throat> and then you two can go back to talking all you want about bums and businessmen. I'll say grace. Thank you, dear. <clears throat> dear Lord, please bless this food that'll make the men mighty and the women zippy. And also, please bless Edward that his, you will transform his heart, that he will stop doing obscene things like climbing into garbage cans. And also, please help his and Rebarba's imminent wedding, even if it requires divine intervention. Amen. 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 So, Edward, on the subject of marriage... I'll get it. Oh. Hello, you. I am here on behalf of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Why are you here? To investigate, obviously. To investigate what? I'm afraid that is classified. Just pretend I'm not here, eh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid I'm undercover at the moment. <laughs> and? I do not care about when I'm undercover. Oh, wait, did, didn't you just blow your cover when you told us you were with the FBI? Maybe. Oh, oh maybe. I'm not with the FBI, huh? I don't care who you're with. You get out of my house. Look, it's all right, Pop. It's just my coworker, Weasel. Ow! Ow! Thank you. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Edward. Mr. Engelman told me I had to keep an eye on you, and I didn't know what else to do. He said he'd fire me unless... Unless what? Look, you just can't become a bum. <laughs> What's wrong with you people? Engelman Enterprises needs you. You're a highly valuable asset. Oh, no. <laughs> we need a good time, Weasel. Oh, I think we're all entitled to know if Edward is planning on becoming a bum. I agree. Look, I'm not I think I'm becoming a bum. Oh, perhaps it's better if I just leave. Oh, yes. No, 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 no. Any friend of Edwards is a friend of ours. Why don't you stay for dinner? What are you having? Brussels sprouts. Oh, hot dog. You were saying about Edward. Oh, yes, well, I'm not one to spread rumors. But this morning at the office, Edward sang a very provocative song about quitting one's job. Edward, this is true? Are you quitting? No, it was just a song. Just a song? How do you expect to support your future family without a job? I was merely questioning the employee-boss relationship being the de facto means for a happy life. I've been an employee for over 40 years. 
What are you saying about me? No, 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 I'm not saying anything about you, Pop. You owe your entire upbringing to your father's countless hours of hard work. What Edward is trying to say, Mrs. Pibbles, is that without any ill feelings towards his family members or co-workers, right? And completely for his own reasons, Edward wants to be a bum. Oh, yes, thank you. No, I mean, no. <laughs> Where are you getting this from? I don't want to be a bum. Son. This all sounds kind of funny, coming from the guy who hides in trash cans. Oh, no, that was entirely on behalf of Weasel. Can't you see he's concerned about you? We all are. Well, I'm only saying this as a friend. Edward smelled really bad this morning. <gasps> That's because he was with the queen of the bum. <laughs> it's no coincidence. And just a few weeks ago, his hair was particularly unkempt. <gasps> Will you shut up? I don't know where you're all getting off thinking you know what's best for me. I don't even know what I want. Can we, can we just please change the subject? How about the wedding? It's never too early to pick your colors, but that won't be necessary, Mrs. Pibbles. It's clear to me that Edward is incapable of making up his mind, which means it's time for me to go. What on earth do you mean? I can't bury a man who'd rather come out with a fire hydrant than with me. You're putting words in my mouth. Wait, 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 please. Oh, please. Would you please give your barber and I a moment alone? Come on, kids. We can listen through the vent. <laughs> Don't screw this up, Edward. You're not gonna find another girl like this ever again. And if you do end up breaking up, try to wait till after dessert. We're having English trifle. Ahem. What? Oh, right, right, sorry. But before I go, I just have one thing to say. Get on with it. <sighs> Angerman Enterprises loves you! <laughs> Want a hug? No! Look, <laughs> <laughs> finally, Barbara, I haven't forgotten my promise. Get to a point. Look, of course I want to marry you. I love you. How can I know you're not going to abandon me for some straight girl? Can you drop the whole bum thing? I have every intention of leading a productive life. You mean it? Yes. You're ready to settle down? Yes. Theoretically. <laughs> and keep a steady job? Yes. Oh, Edward. Can I just ask you a question? Uh, of course. Uh, you would want to stand <laughs> in the way of my career ambitions now, would oh, you? Of course not. <laughs> so, you'll understand if our income is a little sparse at first as I pursue my passions? Passions? I'm going to become a jazz musician. <laughs> a jazz musician? Look, I know I don't have any musical training, <laughs> but it's my calling after all. Just imagine breaking free from society and leading a life that's improvisational, inspirational, uncontainable. The word is unsustainable. How, how are we possibly going to afford a, a mortgage? We won't need a mortgage. We'll live in a teepee. A teepee? Imagine the wonders of nature, a buffalo skin away, sunset, starry nights. Rivara, you and I can forsake the world. But I don't want to forsake the world. Well, why do you like everyone else? You only live once. Because I like toilet paper and, and carpet and fancy mustard, and I don't want our kids to have to worry about bears. Okay, maybe I'm not being entirely realistic, but before we commit ourselves to life of drudgery, why don't we? Pursue our dreams a little. While you dream your life away, I plan on living mine in the real world. Goodbye, Edward. What? I can't take this anymore. It's it's not you. It's okay. It is <laughs> I see. You want a cookie cutter husband, but I can't give you that. Because the whole responsible adult thing just isn't you, right? I can be responsible. I have yet to see it. <laughs> 
I know how to real job for the last two years just to make you happy. Is that the only reason? Yes, mostly. It's because you and my parents and everyone else said that I had to. Well then, read my lips. You don't have to. No one is stopping you from throwing your life away. You can say that. You're using your guilt inflicting tone of voice. <laughs> can we be done with this conversation? I don't want to lose Let's you, tell Barbara. Me what means more to you, me or your passion? You're not being fair. And it's fair for your future wife and children to live in poverty? Who will believe living in poverty? We'll be millionaires in a few years. That's not going to happen. You're condemning me to failure because I have the audacity to think differently. You'll condemn yourself to failure because I know you. You're a bum. If you really loved me, you'd accept me as a bum. If you really loved me, you would face reality. But it's better to try and fail than fail to try. Not when you have a family. Then you're in their right mind and want a family. I'm not going to let you be my ball and chain. Hold on. I am the one dumping you. I'm not going to let you be my lazy, drunken excuse for a husband. I don't have to take this. I'm leaving. What do you mean you're leaving? This is your house. I'm leaving. But I'm not leaving you. I'm leaving everything, which just happens to include you. Well, there are some things in life you just can't run away from. What do you know about life? Mine's slipping away. I have a feeling I've wasted years on you. Do you have any very sorry to hear that. <laughs> Have you been listening this entire time? I was concerned. <laughs> and seeing, if you and Barbara are no longer together, I thought you could use a gentleman to escort her home. You are such a... Thank you, Weasel. I would love a gentleman. <laughs> Enjoy your life without me, Edward. I hope it's everything you dream. See ya. <laughs> Edward! You screwed that up. <laughs> I think it's time we had a little talk. <laughs> And then, of course, my mom said, there's no way I'm touching that snake. But I wasn't afraid. I reached out. You know, <laughs> my house is just a block from here. Mm -hmm. And I could use some alone time. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Oh, well, the pleasure was all mine, my lady. Hey, perhaps I could check up on you tomorrow to make sure you're doing all right? That would be fine. Good night. Sweet dreams. Oh, hot dog! I am 
wide awake, searching for the path of glory that I must take. I have begun a revolution. Will forsake the land and go to live a life that others only have told. I'm alive and I'm free and I feel no shame. Still cry all the world and my words proclaim.
be a millionaire. That's what they all say. You're leaving me with no choice here. Either you come to work with me, or I'll tell Mr. Ankerman where to find you, and you can talk to him yourself. No, no, please don't. Is that alcohol I smell? Ooh, oh, you've chosen some bad company, Edward. This woman is undoubtedly a lawbreaker. What do you have under your coat? No! Officer! Hey, officer! Over here! Over here! <laughs> Search them, please. No! Search the others then. Search them yourself. I don't have time for this. Aren't there laws against sitting around doing nothing? According to City Statute 155, who, alerting in public area is a class C misdemeanor punishable for up to 90 days in jail. Have any of you been loitering? No, ma'am, no, ma'am. No, ma uh, <laughs> <laughs> what in three women? What a joke! These women are professional loiterers! So what if they are? What kind of crazy system punishes somebody for doing nothing? The city council is determined to clean up these streets and take out the trash. Let this be a warning to you. You have been warned, Edward. Perhaps a night in jail will bring it to your senses. Hey! Get out of here, or you'll get the cabbage taken. <laughs> <laughs> and stay away from Barbara! Aw, oh, you still can! I just don't want her to end up with that thing. This angry man guy, he sounds pretty scary. He is. Don't worry, Ed. We won't let him hurt you. <laughs> no, you don't understand. He's incredibly scary. Maybe I shouldn't quit. What does your heart say? <laughs> it feels guilty. As if I'm letting everyone down. Down here, it's a fluttering sensation. Like I'm about to embark on some great adventure. Up here, it's spinning in circles. Every path seems wrong. If I look within myself, I see confusion. If I look around, everybody else seems to know what's best for me. If I look down, I see you guys, with whom, um, no offense. I don't want to be. If I look up, I see the frown of God. What am I supposed to do? When logic fails you, you can always tend to music. Go play the trumpet! Okay. <laughs> Is that true? You can substitute logic with music. As long as you got a catchy tune, you can justify anything. <laughs> and it works every time. You, you're telling me that if I had a song about not hating myself so much, I could raise my self-esteem? Give it a try! My ex-husband left me.
appreciate you taking time out of your schedule, but... Mr. Engerman thinks I'm looking for Edward. Oh, well, I doubt he'll come back to work. Well, Mr. Engerman seems to think he will, and who am I to argue? Hurry up, this is a group effort. Well, I just barely started. Did you? I carried it all the way here. Yeah, well, it's a bag of hard work to escort you, okay? <laughs> Mr. Engerman told me to do whatever it takes, which implies spending whatever it costs. <laughs> Hence, the Claire de Bordeaux, non-alcoholic, of the company's money for... When Edward hears about the fine time we're having together, he'll be so jealous he'll have to come back to work. Oh, wait, you mean you're using me? Of course. That's what we do in the corporate world. <laughs> have you not thought about the benefits of using me? <laughs> Surely you have an interest in making Edward jealous. Uh, what? Be honest. I suppose the thought may have crossed my mind. Well then. Drink up. What do you see in the guy anyway? We broke up, remember? If anything were to happen, he'd have to win me back. So you want him to win you back? I didn't say that. So you don't want him to win you back? Oh, I didn't say that either. So what you're saying is that while it's entirely possible that he could win you back, it's more than possible that your affections could be directed elsewhere, provided that your newfound object of affection meets the minimum criteria. If I say yes, will you stop pestering me? Well, that's just one more question. What exactly is your minimum criteria? Well, he would have to be a realist. No silly fantasies about teepees and jazz music? Certainly not. Go on. <laughs> At the same time, a little romance. But it hurts. Like a picnic in the park? <laughs> yes. <gasps> Though it would be better at night. At night, there's curfew laws. <laughs> Which makes it all the more fun. You're joking, right? <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> well, then he'd have to be diligent, punctual, a productive member of society. Only during the day. But at night... He'll burst down your front door and smother you with kisses. <laughs> Actually... I was thinking he could just knock on my window. Why not just use the door? It's... More romantic that way? Yes. Are you, uh... Are you all right here? Come back to me. Come on. Oh! Sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, you come home, we'll go to bed, wake up the next morning and do it all over again. Oh, it's not that I wouldn't love to break the routine now and again, but we all need something constant in our lives. Something we can depend on. Or, uh, someone. He must be out there. Somewhere. Wait. It's impossible. You're Barbara, my poor, confused friend. You've had too much of this. In every town, there's a girl or two who doesn't know where she's going. With a head leaning back, she thinks, What do I lack? As she's pushed right along with the flowing, she thinks maybe tomorrow I'll figure it out. When life's not so dreary and hot, but when will she learn? That the world's gonna turn. I know whether she's, she's ready. Though it sometimes seems like the man of your dreams is lost somewhere out in space. Just look around and he might be found right in front of your face. He's gotta look good as he works all day. But when the job is finished, he'll run home and play. He'll throw up his tie as he shows you his charms. To his manly arms. With a feel, <laughs> just what he and in a fitting cranky he'll play. You know just what I'm in and never will exist. Perhaps this man you seek does not exist. Thank <laughs> you.
my big number and she stole me. music lessons. Entrepreneurship is really hard. Maybe I should apologize to Mr. Angry.
make something of myself. Well, they sell them at the shop over on night, so it wasn't cheap. It actually cost my whole life savings. So, but I figured it was all or nothing, you know? I bought that once. And now I have nothing. Here, take your dollar back. I don't want the dollar. I want you to leave. You're depressing me. <laughs> Here, you need this more than me. I can't take this. I don't want anyone saying I had an unfair advantage. I'm going to show that anyone can make it from the bottom up. In that case, can I have my dollar back? No. <laughs> <laughs> I have no money, no material possessions, really whatsoever, no job, no responsibilities. I am completely and unequivocally free. <laughs> hey guys, I'm a bum! <laughs> Make obscene cat calls at the Met. 
by multiple witnesses and verified by photographic proof, Mr. Pimbles has been found contributing to a culture of chaos, disorder, and scary street people. For the betterment of our downtown area, and for the safety of our children, it is my wish that he be made a public example of. That is all. Thank you, Weasel. Mr. Pibble, the floor is now yours. Would it be all right if I read a little speech, everyone? Go ahead. <clears throat> Last night I spent my first night in a prison. And it was wonderful. I had all this time to reflect on my thoughts. I mean, food wasn't that bad either. Look, Mom, glad to know that um, I decided that I would rather leave a productive life, no matter how nice the handouts, and not be a bum. But how is the question? By giving up my dreams and being like everyone else? <laughs> Surely I thought that there must be a middle path. And that's when it came to me. In my dreams last night, a magical unicorn was trotting through the glimmer of the moon. I climbed onto her saddle, and then to my surprise, she took me to the kingdom of the dwarves. Mr. Pibble, is this play to your earring? Uh, yes, in a mystical way. All around were little men with silly hats and silver beards. Though I was roughly twice their size, no one laughed and no one feared. Some were flying golden kites while others chipped away in stone. Though some were dreaming, others clean. Everyone seemed right at home. But how could their economy support the strange anomaly? With some at work and some at play and no one bossing anyone. Did this happen every day? A world of sweet tranquility, where each with his ability pursues his calling, never stalling. Though I longed to join the fun, I knew I really had to run, for I had duties far away, important business left undone. I asked around who has the time, but all I got were empty stares. In the dwarvish world I learned There is no time nor need for cares I would soon be late for work The stress was driving me berserk But still they could not understand For in the dwarvish world you see There is a secret, oh so grand They have no word for work at all For work is play every day Nothing drives their dreams away Can you blame a guy for wanting to take a break from this heart attack-inducing rat race? 
What does this have anything to do with your charge of loitering? I am literally being charged for the crime of doing nothing. But the America that I believe in gives every man the right to be as unproductive as he wants, <laughs> ensuring justice and liberty for bums. <laughs> Furthermore, I believe that if each of you look within yourselves, you'll find that deep down, each and every one of you is a bum. <laughs> How many of you given the chance to not sleep in later than you could, or having gorged your fat bellies on an unhealthy diet, or lied through your teeth to save a buck? And in short, what makes you better than any of those poor lost souls out on the streets? Sooner or later, the storm will strike. Your businesses will fail. Your funds will run dry. And you, too, will be stripped of everything. Thank you for that thoughtful remark, <laughs> Secretary. Would anyone like to say something relevant to Mr. Peebles' case? <laughs> I would. Edward, your high talk and lofty ideals are utterly idiotic. I know you really want your job back, and in punishment, I'm going to give it to you. I'll expect to see you as soon as you're out of here. Only from now on, you'll report two weeks. The corporate gods are not pleased with those that defy them. May this untimely devotion cry out against you in future in interviews, limiting your salary potential for years to come. I will not write you a letter of recommendation. I will not put in a good word for you at executive meetings. Your entire future will rest on weasels, managerial whims. Your very identity <laughs> will be swallowed up in the enterprises. enterprises. <laughs> Your only hope in the stock you don't want. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> no, sir. <clears throat> Edward, I'll have you know this hurts me more than it hurts you. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Anyone else? Me! Edward, we just want you to know that even though you've stolen the family name and made an ass of yourself, you're still our son and you will always have a place in our home. <coughs> Dear, what about Juanita? Oh, right. We figured you weren't coming back and so we rented out your room. You're on your own now. <laughs> I want to say thanks for your job and your girl. Tell me you're not falling for this queen. My personal life is none of your business. That's enough! I'm calling this hearing to a close. Mr. Pimples, having carefully weighed both sides of your case, I decide to waive all fines and penalties on behalf of your misdemeanor. What? Oh, sorry, sorry, sit down, sit down. <laughs> <laughs> That you promise to fully reinstate yourself as a productive member of society. You ought to do as your boss is requested. To show up tomorrow morning for work. And you ought to find him a comfort of pay rates. And you ought to believe and groom yourself like a proper gentleman. You said yes, you did.
that suddenly doesn't sound so bad. As long as I can be with Barbara, I've got to fix things with you first, but how? I messed up so bad. It's like a miracle. <clears throat> Dear God, if you're listening, uh, I could really use some help right now. Are you sure you want to marry me? As if we haven't had enough time to discuss this. Come on. I'm, I'm serious. The signing this paper is a big commitment. Are you sure you're ready to close every door in your life that doesn't involve me? Don't even start. We're supposed to be there in five minutes. Come on. Can I just have one more day? We've had such a great beginning, and we could have such a beautiful ending. It's just this middle part we have to work through. What if I never change? Oh, you'll change. I've taken on projects much more hopeless than you. Remember, don't do this! Well, 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 if it isn't the fugitive! I'm sorry I ran away. I, I thought I was doing what was best. You just don't know when to quit, do you? I thought I could give up everything important and find meaning. Please, don't make the same mistake that I did. You have nothing to offer this woman! While you're begging for pennies, I'll be showering her with pearls and fancy mustard, fish eggs, and dead animals! I'm on my way straight to the top, and there's no stopping me! I can't do this! What? Never! When you ran out last night, I thought I would never see you again. I thought about you all night. I thought about you all night! Oh, I was so confused! And now I realize I was about to do something stupid. I resent that. <laughs> can you ever forgive me? If you can forgive me, I, I've been so selfish. No, I've been selfish. I thought that if you really loved me, you would do things my way. But last night I saw that you were genuinely trying to follow your heart. How could I not love you for that? I can't believe what I'm hearing. You're choosing the bomb? More than that. What's she doing? I don't know. What's more? <laughs> Going in there. <laughs> Edward, if you want to be a bum, then I want to be a bum with you. Oh, I know I've given you no reason to love me back. I would have blamed you and all of you. I love you more than ever. Because I've seen what the world is like without you, and it's not nearly not pretty. So you can live with my girlish whims? You can withstand my boyish grossness. Oh, Edward! Go on! Throw your lives away! Ridiculous. <laughs> ring a ding ding, I want the ring. <laughs> What's up, Reese? <laughs> Don't come crawling to me when you're starving and broke, because the world needs accountants, not jazz musicians! Are you listening to me, Edward? It's only a matter of time before you're shining the shoes of the future president of my given enterprises! The only problem is there is no Angerman Enterprises. What? <laughs> the stock market crashed last night. After decades of investment, I'm no better off than you. All my bonds, shares, dividends, all gone. The entire economy is sunk, putting millions of Americans out of the job. Including us. This can't be happening. If you've got a dollar to your name, you're a rich man. Oh. <laughs> I'm glad I hung on to this. <laughs> well, there's a man of wisdom. Edward, as soon as I knew my ship was sunk, I came looking for you. Now that I'm a bum, I'll need direction from an expert. This is oh. all just a bad trip. <laughs> well, uh, we'll have to grow a neck beard and swear for no reason at all. And make a scene cat calls at all the men. <laughs> Should I be taking notes? Uh, for now, I want you to sit on that bench and contemplate an existence free of material possessions. Who would have thought losing everything could be so spiritual? That sounds like hard work. Perhaps you could use another assistant? Good call. Never contemplate something you can have others contemplate for you. You are here by Miss School Assistant on the day. Oh, my door! Oh, Why have only few found the 
It doesn't matter. As long as we hear the music, we can live a life that's improvisational, inspirational, uncontainable. Completely sustainable. I just realized what it's all about. What? Where we're going and what, what we're doing here. And I finally have the words to express it. Well, what are they? Get out!